Okay, so secondary sources. What do you think a secondary source is? Think of the word, second, two. So think back to the book. We had our primary source, number one. Who was the primary source? Who was number one? That's right, Mama Bird telling Peter to fly home for dinner. So she was the first one. She had the original message, the original piece of information. So secondary source would have been one, two. That's right, the little cardinal, the little cardinal ball player. I just got that. That was the secondary source. So here's the thing about sources. We have the primary source, that's number one, Mama Bird, right? Secondary source, that was a little cardinal ball player. So all those other birds on the telephone wire, they are all secondary sources too. When it comes to information sources, it doesn't, we, you know, we don't say third source or fourth source or 56th source. Anybody who is not the primary source is the secondary source. So not just the little cardinal that first transferred the incorrect message, so not just the little cardinal, but all those other birds after him. All those other birds after him are also secondary sources. So it's a pretty easy thing to remember that way, uh, that it's just one and two basically, when it comes to information sources. Let me make a short adjustment here for the class. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we got an idea of what our primary sources are, and we have an idea of who our secondary sources are in relation to the picture book we just read, right? Telephone? So we're going to do a little experiment now, since we have a pretty good understanding of what those two things are. We don't have a great understanding. We're just dipping our toes in here. This is our first introduction to information sources, but that's okay. But now we're going to break into a little bit of an experiment. Would you mind passing out those, yeah, those handouts there? Thank you. So, it's coming around and we are giving you a couple of handouts. These are news articles that have been printed out from the Newzella website. Who here has used Newzella before? That's right, yeah, we used it just a couple of months ago, remember? It's the site where you can adjust the reading level of the articles that you pick so that it's a good fit for you. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of, I know a lot of you folks like that site, so we're going to use that since it's something we're kind of familiar with and comfortable with. So each of you is going to get an article, and they're all about different things, like you saw on the site those months ago. All different subjects, some of them cover history, some of them cover science, like earth science, biology, all kinds of things, and they're all different reading levels. So when we come around and pass those out, I want you to pick a topic that you think seems kind of interesting, and I want you to pick a re uh, an article that represents a reading level that you think is a good fit for you, that you feel comfortable with, okay? So when you get your articles, can you pass these out here too? Okay, thank you. We're going to have these highlighters passed out too. Everybody's going to get two highlighters. One is going to be yellow and one is going to be green. And I'm going to tell, tell you what we're going to do with those right now. So in your articles, you may notice that most of it looks normal, normal type. But then there are a couple little bits and pieces that are bold, that thick, dark lettering on your page. So I did half of the work for you here, because I know this is our introduction to it. We're just dipping our toes in. So I did a little bit of work to take the load off of you just, just, just by a, a bit. So I have gone ahead and in all the articles, any one that you pick, I have bolded, bolded all of these sources in these articles. Can you tell what you're going to do? Anybody guess? Yeah, you have some, okay, yeah, yeah, so that's the idea. Just like she said, what we're going to do is essentially an information source scavenger hunt. How exciting. Information source scavenger hunt. So, with your yellow highlighters, you are going to read your articles, and with your yellow highlighter, you are going to highlight all of the primary sources. Remember primary, number one, number one, and then what are you going to do with the green one? 
That's right, that's right. You're going to highlight all those secondary sources. Number two, secondary sources. So you're going to read your articles and figure out which of the bold, like I said, I did a little bit of the work for you. So those are the sources, but it's up to you to figure out which are primary sources and which are secondary sources. Okay? And it's a little bit different than what we were just seeing here with our picture book. You know, with the picture book, it was kind of all neatly drawn out for us. It was easy to tell who the first person was because it was literally the first bird on the telephone wire, right? Mama bird. She's the first one there. She's the one with the original message, right? So it's easy to tell when she's the primary source. She's the first one on that wire. And then everybody after her, all those other crazy birds, they are the secondary sources. Well, it's a little bit different when you're just reading an article. You don't have it all mapped out there for you like that. So this is where your detective skills come in. Specifically, this is where your context clue detective skills come in. Yes, context clues. We covered that unit not too long ago. Remember, what are context clues? Think like a detective. Use your clues. Yes, yes, that is right. Context clues are the words, like when we first did it, we were talking about vocab words, remember? The words that are around the vocab words that kind of give you a clue or a hint as to what the vocab word is. So that's basically exactly how this is going to work, too. You need to not only just read the bold parts, the part that I did for you, you need to read the whole article, but specifically take a close look around in the surrounding area where those bold sources are. You need to take a look at that and see if there are any clues that tell you, is this a primary source, first person, or is this a secondary source, second, third, fourth, fifth, fifty-sixth person, right? So how exactly does that work? Again, with the picture book, it was all laid out for us. It was easy to see first person, second person, etc., etc. All those secondary sources. How can you tell that with text, with just words? I'm going to give you a little more hint, okay? A little bit more of a hint. So here's the thing you should be on the lookout for. So I'm like the top investigator and you're all my little detectives, right? So as a top investigator, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice from years of being a context clue detective. Let me give you a little bit of advice from a senior to a sophomore, okay? You're new at this game. Let me, let me give you some tips. When it comes to primary sources, what you are looking for is a direct connection. Can you say that? Direct connection to what is being talked about, no matter what that is. I'm giving an example. I know somewhere out there there's an article, I don't know if anybody's chosen it, but there's an article about an earthquake that happened in Japan a few years ago. And one of the sources, one of the people that I bolded in there is an eyewitness who lived in Japan when the earthquake struck. He was in his house when the earthquake struck and he's talking about the earthquake. What's Direct connection, right. He had a direct connection to the event that is being talked about in that article. He was there when the earthquake happened, okay? Think about Mama Bird. What was her message? What was the information? Tell Peter to come home for dinner, right? She was there. She was in the kitchen making the food for dinner. So she has the direct connection. It was her information to give, basically, right? Okay, let's think about secondary sources then. Um, I believe there's another article out there about Abe Lincoln. So there are two, uh, there are two sources, well, there are a couple sources in the article, but uh, I'm going to use two examples. One of the sources that is used to give information about Abe Lincoln, remember what we said about sources? They're the things or the, uh, the places, the things that we get information from, source. So one of the sources is a letter written by Abe Lincoln's brother about Abe Lincoln, to Abe Lincoln. Direct connection. The letter was written by Abe Lincoln's brother. You can't get much more of a direct connection than that, right? And he's providing information about his brother, the, president, the 12th president, Abe Lincoln. 
There's another source in that same article. It's a historian who has written a book about Abe Lincoln. This historian lives now in these current times, in these modern times, this historian is a second source. Why do you, th uh, why do you think that historian is a secondary source? Yeah, that's right. If we think of it in the context of the book, the telephone book that we just read, that historian is like the owl, almost, let's say. That's a pretty good comparison, because owls are smart, are smart, right? This historian is all the way on the other end of that telephone wire. So when you're reading, I want you to kind of try to visualize it like that. The bold sections of your article, the person that this source is representing, where are they on that telephone wire? Are they closer to the front, where Mama Bird is? Like that earthquake eyewitness? He was there, he was involved, and now he's giving information on that thing. Abe Lincoln's brother, same thing. He was the man's brother. He knew quite a bit about him, right? He was there, towards the front of that wire. But now we look at the owl. He was all the way on the other end of the wire, and he got the message right, right? That's something that we're going to be talking about a little bit after your exercise. But he was all the way on the end of that wire. There were a lot of birds between Abe Lincoln's brother and that historian, right? A lot of time has passed. So when you're reading your articles, I want you to try to visualize it like that. Is this person at the front of the wire or at the back of the wire? And then that's going to help you figure out, are you going to highlight it yellow 